Hello everyone and welcome to Advent of Code uh, in F Sharp Day 4. I had to go look at what language I was using again. Uh, so let's dive right into Day 4. Um, here we go. Passport processing. Okay. We arrive at the airport. Story, story, story. Um, they have problem detecting which passwords have all the required fields. And they give us a list of the required fields. Birth year, passport ID, okay. The data is validated in batch files, which is our puzzle input. Mm -hmm. It's a, every passport is represented as a sequence of key value pairs separated by spaces or new lines. Spaces or new lines, okay. Passports are separated by blank lines. Okay. So these are four passports. Yeah, there's a white line between each that's a good delimiter first one is valid because it has all eight required fields yeah mm -mm -mm. second is invalid it's missing one the height yeah i'm sure third passport is interesting <clears throat> the only missing field is cids yeah so you have a missing field why is it interesting Temporarily ignore the missing CID fields. This sounds like a part two extension, but okay. So we have to ignore CID fields or missing CID fields. Okay, so everything except CID has to be there for every passport to be treated as valid. Fourth one is missing two fields. So again, that optional CID and birth year, okay. The approved system would report two valid passports. Yeah, the first two. Oh, no. The first and the third one. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have to count the number of valid passports in our puzzle input, given that CID is an optional one. Cool. Grabbing my input. Let's take a look at how big it is. A thousand plus lines of passport information. Okay, let's read it in. Okay, so how are we going to tackle this? Mm, this again, two parts. First, we have to parse the input, and then we have to count the valid, the number of valid passports. So let's do parsing first. No, let's think about the, the data structure we want to use first. So we need to parse a, a sequence or a list of passports. And a passport is a list or a, a combination of key value pairs. And not all of them have to be there. Or not all of them are there in the input. I'm, I'm thinking should we use a record type with optional fields for every one of them? Or should we just use a dictionary lookup table for part one it doesn't really matter that much no let's keep it simple let's just keep a, a list of key value pairs so uh, let's define a type uh, type passport that won't have much interesting information no it's just a sequence of uh, key value pairs uh, what is a key value pair? Uh, are we going to use the, the built-in key value pair? Nah. Let's just do key uh, string value string because we don't really have to do anything with it. We just have to check for its existence later on. So stupid types, but types. Um, let's write a parser. Let's write a parser. And let's start with the example because this is getting into non-trivial territory. Uh, I'm just gonna take the example from the website. There we go. And let's try parsing that. So first, let's split it, the block of text into different passport strings and then treat every passport or parse every passport individually. Let's not write a function just yet. Let's just figure it out as we go. Mm, it's a string. It's a string. The example is a string, but this is the input. 
Um, it'll be easier if you treat the input as one big string instead of a uh, line. So let's just read all the text. Now we have a single string, right? Yep. And um, we parse this single string. We split the single string on uh, yeah, a white line. So that's... Mm, Uh, QWERTY again, come on, I'm looking for the overload where you can provide a string, there we go, and the string is two new lines, there we go, um, what, what does it need, string split options, mm, let's just not provide any options so it's now splitting so we now should have a string for every passport that looks one two three four one two three four last one is yeah that looks correct so now we have a split the input by passport and now we need to parse every passport individually let's write a function for that uh, Passport. Uh, and it returns a passport. But for now, let's just make that an empty passport with nothing in there. Mm, parsing a single passport. It's key value, key value, key value, separated by spaces or new lines. Mm -hmm. And the tricky one, this one. I'm thinking, should we go for regular expressions again? Of course we should. It was fun the last time. I'm gonna use the same website I used uh, last time, regexer. It's a lot of fun to interactively build your regular expressions. And I'm gonna make the screen a bit smaller so you can actually see what's happening down here. I saw that last time uh, you were not seeing the full power of this tool. Okay. Mm. Um, so what do we actually have to do? Parse. A key value pair separated by white space. Let's match on the first key value pair first, which is... A sequence of characters. What is it? Words. Where's my tool at? There we go. Yeah. So match on a word and then a delimiter and then a value. It's uh, anything basically. And then we have. Hmm? It's doing weird things. Word is any word character, sorry. So we need a lot of words. And then we have a delimiter, and then we have a lot of whatevers. Mm, a lot of whatevers except white space. How do you say everything but white space? Alphanumeric and underscore. So that's actually also W. Yeah. Okay. That is working except for when there's a non-numeric alphanumeric character in there. So let's not do it this way. Let's do it this way and accept. Hmm. I'm bad at regexes. Now I'm stuck again. Is there like a tutorial mode? Nope, let's just Google it. Regex anything except white space. There we go. Stack overflow to the rescue. Any non-white space character. Big S. This is crazy. How, how do people remember this? <laughs> uh, so match any non-white space character. There we go. So this is... Uh, this is enough. Now we have a, a list of matches. Let's look at the list of matches. Uh, we haven't any groups yet, but it looks like it's treating the individual... Uh, properties so let's um, 
write some group names around this so we can extract the values easier. Uh, this is the key. Is it parsing the keys correctly? Height 179. Returns, sorry, returns height, yep. Yeah. And let's extract the value. There we go, height 179. This looks like a correct, correct. We're including the the pound symbol. So this is the regex we need. Uh, we need a regex, but we also need the regex library. Mm -hmm. Let me just dump this here. Um, what they used regular expressions. Was it day two? It was day two. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did there. So let's load up the regex provider. Let's open up that DLL. Let's define a regex type using the, the regex provider. And this one needs the regular expression as input. There we go. And let's make a matcher. Let's make what actually does this thing return? A regular expression instance. Okay, I'm just gonna call it regex. There we go. So now we have uh, our regular expression and we should be able to um, match on let's grab a single one and let's just test it around last one it has spaces and new lines oh it has new lines did we do something with new lines explicitly no it's just smart enough to match every time we find a semicolon separated key value pair okay that's good enough for our purposes uh, let's do some testing. So parse passport. Nope, let's just first play around with the regex. Match uh, the given password. So now we're not really writing tests, we're just playing around in the REPL. There we go. Um, how many how many matches do we have? No, what's it called? Is it the groups thing? We should have, what do they call it here? Seven matches. Is there a, give me all the matches? Matches, there we go. So this matches it as many times as this uh, regex appears in a string. That's probably better. It's a match collection, so it's a sequence of stuff, and every match is a key value pair. Yep. So, how do we extract the key value pairs? Um, it's a sequence, so we can map over it. A match. So, is this should actually work? It's not working because. A match collection is not compatible with a type sequence. Why Why are you saying it's a sequence in my output? Okay, if we can do this, then what can we do? Ah, how, how, how do we get the collection out of this? How do we work with this thing? <laughs> Uh, can we index? We can index. Is there a neat way to loop over regex matches in C sharp? Looping through matches, yep. For match in matches, so they just use a for loop. Yeah, they're just using a for loop. 
this is what do what how do we do this in f sharp can we do a, a for comprehension for match in yield the match does this work yeah it works so now we have a list of matches i don't know how to do it other in another way so let's just do it like this so for every match let's just push that into a list yeah that'll work um and then we can can do something for every key value pair uh, match Ooh, that's another match let's just call it key vp and our type was a key and a value so the key is uh key vp dot what did we call it key and value where are you where is my strong typed Where's my strongly typed? Uh, how does it work for multiple matches? I know how to use the, the regex provider for a single match. How does it work for multiple matches? Time to Google it. It's been a while. I think we're losing more time figuring out this a uh, type provider library than <laughs> the actual parsing. But you win some, you lose some, you learn some. Mm. That's a single match, that's what we've been doing up until now. Find me all the matches. Uh, they can do a sequence.map. That's interesting. So that should actually work. Why is it not working for me? Let's do it again. So they can do a sequence.map on this part. And I cannot. <laughs> What's the difference? No method prefix. I don't know what this means. Don't care. Ah, typed. They changed the library and I'm not typed matches there we go oh so we were almost there except yeah now it has our key and value group names mm -mm -mm. so let's extract the key and the value i don't know if this has much added value now the separate type i mean yeah, maybe a lot of dots like these value dot value key dot value. Now we don't have to do these every time. But I think we have our key value pairs. Let's call them properties. This is parsing a single. This is parsing a single password, I'm guessing. No, the proper, ah, the record label, sorry. There we go. And this has all the properties. HL, IA, YR, G25, Yeah, that looks correct. So let's wrap it in a function. Uh, let, what's it called? Parse password. So this is actually the implementation for parse passwords. Uh, it's not a sequence, but a list we need. For a password, right? Yeah, we define it as a list. So, mm. there we go. And let's, ooh, my mouse pointer is freaking out. Okay. And let's not use the example, but the um, provided arguments. So, there we go. I'm just gonna write like I'm gonna write a, a quick test 
to make sure uh, it's working. Uh, new lines are part of the test actually. So let's keep them in there. Nah, that doesn't matter. It'll work. So what happens if you parse this? Uh, it's a uh, verbose. Let's not let's not hard code that as a test. It's gonna take us too long. Okay, but basically we can parse passwords right now. So let's define our parse function. Yeah, a parse function as take the text, split it, and it has to be a string. So sometimes you have to help the compiler with type hints or type declarations and that should do it let's parse our input and let's assign that to something so we can start working with it okay we have parsed all our passwords uh, now we need to find the valid ones. So that's a filter. So it should turn true or false. Mm -hmm. And what was the actual check? All the required fields have to be in there. And the required fields are all these except CID. CID can exist, but is not required. Is there any? So if we have encountered different fields in these ones, that's not a problem, right? No. Mm, I'm gonna, since we're using uh, key value pairs, list of key value pairs, I'm just gonna maintain a list of uh, all the known keys. And that's uh, birth year. Uh, issue year, expiration year, come on, height, air color, eye color, passport ID, and country ID, but uh, that's optional, so let's not include that one. So let's call them uh, required keys. Let's move the solution up to the bottom. Okay, so we have our required keys and they all have to be present in the given password. So required keys. This is something called for all, yeah. Key so the password should have this key. If this had, would be, have been a dictionary, that would have been easier. But okay, we went for list. So let's stick with list just for now. So now we're saying of the required keys, no, for a given password, it should, uh, for all the required keys, there should be a, a key value pair in there with this given key. So this should actually work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Mm, I'm gonna play around with the example a bit to see if it's working. And then passwords, we'll filter only the valid ones. Okay, it's a sequence. Now uh, we should have two, right? We should have two, yeah. So the, the number is correct. Are we looking at the correct? Uh, are we looking at the correct passwords? I'm not sure. Let's keep that for when it's not correct 
at the first try. So let's parse the input. Let's filter the valid ones and let's count them. No. <laughs> Saying that there's only one valid password in there, I find that hard to believe. How many passwords do we have? Hmm. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So it's not parsing our input correctly. But it's parsing our example correctly, right? Yeah, so we have four passwords if we parse our input, uh, our example, sorry, but if we parse the input file, it's not really doing what we expect. Maybe it's just a rebel thing, maybe I reassigned input. Let's uh, make sure that's not happening first. Yeah, it's not happening. So what's the problem? Why is it not parsing? So it looks like it's not splitting on the new lines correctly. Hmm. Ah, oh, is it going to be the the new line thing? Like return carriage? Is this going to be the problem? Oh dear God, it was a problem. So let's not worry too much about that. Let's fix that later. There we go. We have some kind of solution. If this doesn't work, let's dig deeper into the problems we saw, but it works. So I'm tempted to just forge on ahead for part two. Mm -hmm. What's uh, part two about? The line is moving more quickly. Better add some data validation quick. Okay. We can still ignore CID. Mm -hmm. Each field has strict rules. Uh oh. Now I wish I would have had more types, but okay. So there's, oh, there's validation for every different property. And they have to be both present and valid. Count the number of valid passwords again. So it's the same as before, but the properties don't just have to exist. Their data or their values have to be correct as well. Why is this CID? Sorry. Why is this CID in there? Does this mean we're going to see passwords again? Probably we're going to see passwords again. But we have validation rules. Okay. Let's look at what we had. So we filter on is valid and invalid. Is valid is right now just checking uh, whether. We have required keys. And then we have to check for every different property. We have to check the, the business rule or the, or the validation rule separately. Let's just try the second function for that. And let's rename this one to uh, has required properties. Or we can keep the is valid thing. Yeah, we can keep is valid and make that a composite. So is valid of a password. That's still the same. Uh, let's move that down because we're going to need this one. Uh, once is enough. Thank you. So this is uh, has required keys. 
or Visual Studio crashes on F sharp refactorings. That's not cool. That's not cool. Uh, okay, there you go. So this should do the same, but now we have some room to wiggle room to add uh, validations on input fields. Um, passport. And every property should be valid as well. So let's define a new function that checks these business rules or these validations for the different properties. There we go. So this is the outline. And let's let's just pattern match on um, the property names and let's just check whatever we have to check. Did I already copy paste those? No. So let's put them um, right here for now. So let's match on the key. Uh, birth year. Then we have to validate blah blah blah. with, uh, forget my syntax, so both you have four digits at least, 90, 20, and at most, 2002. Okay, let's parse that to an int. We're going to have to do that a lot. There's three years, but okay, let's um, take it one step at a time. And year should be between 1920 and 2002, 2002 birth year. People have to be at least 18 years old. Interesting. I wonder if there's a more elegant way of doing a, a between check in F-sharp. If you know, please let me know in the comments. So this is for birth year. And then we have again. We have the same kind of year check for expiration and issue year. So yeah, let's 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 extract that. Year between min max year, and that's exactly what we did here. Uh, let's call it KVP. So, um, birth year checks that the year is between 1920 and 2002. Key value, pair dot value. Yeah, let's. No, let's let's keep it the key value pair. Doesn't matter that much. Okay, so that's birth year. Um, issue year should be. At least 2010, at most 2020. Um, expiration year. Does it, yeah, it warns that I'm doing duplicates. So matching on string is not the end of the world here. Cool. Mm, four digits, I'm, I'm ignoring that part. Let's include four digits here. Uh, four digits we parse to an end so it has to be between or we can just say that the key value pair dot value dot length should be four that also works so we have four digits of four characters sure and it's between uh, min and max glad I caught this now that happens when you don't test your code people don't don't code and do code and test I mean um, expiration year 2020 and 2030. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, so these are the years. There should be one, two, three, four years. Uh, three years, right? Yeah. I'm gonna throw those out so I can 
keep track of what I'm doing. 1920, 2002, to 10 to 20, to 20, to 30. Yeah. Height and number followed by either centimeter or inches. Okay, they're, they're a bit more involved than I was thinking in these validations, but okay. Height. Oh dear God, I was, I was not reading the second line. Let's go back to a formatted way. So it's a number followed by centimeters or inches and depending on the measurements, whether it's centimeters or inches, there's a different rule, okay? It's a bit more complex. Why, Eric? Why are you making it more difficult? Okay, let's just extract that into a function as well. Um, we only have to do this once, right? Yeah, so let's just provide the, the raw string. <clears throat> it's a number followed by either centimeter or in. So the string has to end with centimeters or inches. Regex again, regex again. So again, let's define the regex. I think I can do this one without, no, no, I've been bitten by regexes in the past too much. <laughs> uh, which is height, it's this one. So let's go, we need to extract the, the unit of measure and the, the height itself. So it's a, a lot of digits followed by centimeters or inches. What's an or? What's an or in regex? Choose, yeah. Just a pipe. So it should be centimeters or inches. So if I do this, doesn't match. Uh, let's make sure we hit the end of the string. What was it? Dollar sign or? The carrots, I forget. Dollar signs and and the the is it a carrot? I'm bad with computer layout or character names in English. There it is. So let's start a string, right? Yeah. So this should not match, that's correct. Centimeter should match and inches should match as well. Yeah, this is our regex. Again, let's Wrap a, let's wrap it in a, a name. Uh, the value, value is such a bad word, it's overloaded. Uh, the length, the height, let's call it value. So this is the value, I think. Let's see, yeah, and let's parse the measure. Or let's name that unit. Oh, oh, what's wrong? It's wrong. My parentheses were off. So, yep, there we go. I'm just going to move this startup string out of the capture group. Okay. That looks correct. Let's take it in to our code. And use this one. So um, typed, we're getting it. Um, can this fail? Probably this can fail, let's just do a try type.
um, uh, with the height as input and this returns an option I think if it's a try in the name yeah so we can just pattern match on it yeah we don't need the option to leak through we just need true or false here so if it doesn't match so if it's a wrong input it's not sending a user intro or whatever which should, should return nope and if it's a some match then we need to look at which it is is it centimeters or inches so let's do that uh, what's one doing here it should be value or unit right unit zith no width there we go so if it's centimeters do something it should be between again we're, we're doing it between again let's do a nah it's too simple to do it's actually not too simple it's just as difficult as the year but so let's parse the, the height oh yeah I see what this is saying yeah, it should be this right and this should be an int can this fail let's assume it doesn't and if it breaks we can do a try parse here as well uh, so we can actually parse the height numerical value just fine and if it's centimeters it should be between 150 and 193 193 if it's inches it should be something else it should be 59 and 76 i don't know if these are realistic height uh, <laughs> checks to use at a border control or on a password validation algorithm it's a really specific check that's all I'm saying inches 59 6, 76 yeah so that's the height not the down hair color Ugh. why are there so many checks couldn't we have stopped at like two or three Hair color is a, a hash or a pound symbol followed by exactly six characters. That sounds like regex. Uh, regex what am I saying? This sounds like hexadecimal. But this is actually regex country. This whole <laughs> this whole thing is regex country. So again, let's parse hair color. Where were we? Right here. So we're dispatching on the properties. This is like the dispatching function. So let's dispatch to hair color here. So hair color palette hair color. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was really in my face, that pop up. Again, the mouse pointer is freaking out. Visual Studio is having problems <laughs> for some reason. Um, how will we tackle hair color? We need to parse again. Oh, it's getting old. So it's a pound followed by six characters. Yeah, let's go. We, we went down a dark path. Let's continue down this path. Uh, so it's a hexadecimal number of six characters. Let's grab an example. There we go. And let's regex it again, but let's go a bit faster this time. So uh, let's keep the entire string match who knows what happens otherwise and it's a pound symbol 
This is really like a your regex test, this exercise. Jesus Christ. Uh, six characters, 0 to 9 or A to F. How do you do this? <laughs> 0 to 9. Can, you, can I do literally this? Or what's it called? Is this how you do 0 to 9? Let's see the explanation. Character set matches any character in the set, yeah? Or um, A to F. It's already not matching. <laughs> Oh yeah, because we need a multiple, and we don't just need a multiple, so we need a specific number. How many times was it? Six characters. How do you do this in regex? I'm this bad at regexes, I never use them. So then you put a exactly three that's what we need so exactly six so this is the part that matches on one character and we need exactly six of those so this is our regex now we don't actually need the regex provider i'm thinking because we don't need to read in the the data yeah anyway that's not the end of the world let's keep it consistent Sometimes consistency trumps uh, everything else. Um, let's wrap that into string parameters. There we go. And it should, it should uh, just, it just, should just check whether or not there's a matches, huh? But matches is find all matches, I'm guessing, because we used it already. Yeah, so let's do a try and return based on what we get. So if it matches, we're good. Otherwise, nope. And again, I'm forgetting the width keyword. The so much for hair color. Dear God, how many more? Um, eye color. Great. Eye color is easy. Valid eye color. And that has to be one of the following. That's easy. Thank God, we're almost there. So it's one of these. Mm -hmm. oh, it's timeless. Times like these that I wish that I had some Vim skills or something to speed up trivial keyboard things like this. Especially when you're not used to the keyboard, I have to <laughs> look at my keys every button I press, basically. But there we go. And we need to... Uh, the text has to be one of these, right? Yeah, it just has to be one of these, so... Uh, so it has to be the same. There we go. That's our eye color check. Oh yeah, I see green squigglies. Let's let's actually solve those green squigglies because they might provide match errors. Match errors are the end of the world. Then we know we have to do some extra work. Never check in these green squigglies reduction code. But for today, not a problem. CID can we still ignore? Yeah. So it's PID nine digit number including leading zeros. 
leading zero so it can be zero zero something something do we have an example of that yeah so this should be a valid pid that's, that's much of an edge case enough to um, take some care around that area uh, so pid pid right yeah a nine digit number including leading zeros okay what was pid what does it stand for Passport ID. Uh huh. Go. So let's make sure we grab this one. What's the easiest way to parse something with leading zeros? Just loop over the string. Make sure everything is a digit and check the length. Or should we go over the regex route again? Yeah, let's go over the regex route again. We're going strong in regex country today, so let's just keep going. And that is actually just uh, 0 to 9, and we need exactly 9 of those, right? I'm just going to quickly verify. It would be stupid if we lose an hour. Um, debugging stuff, if this is the problem. Ah, there we go. Already have an error. <laughs> there we go. So this is better. This match is cool. This doesn't match. That's also correct. This matches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. This is the regex you are looking for. There we go. And it's this regex. Oh, still. Actually, this type of writer is overkill for these simple don't extract the values from a regex. So, wasn't aware of that. I always used it up until now. Um, so, it's again the same thing. Try match. Is there only one try? Yeah, only one try. Um, So if we match, we're good. Otherwise, we are not good. Uh, that's it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different validation rules. Is this correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is correct. So in theory, Hmm, do we have the, the same example? No? Well, then I'm gonna run it on the entire input set and see what happens. Um, there's a squiggly here as well. Yeah, if we encounter, hmm, if we encounter, uh, what's it called? The optional one? That is valid, we can ignore that. And anything else shouldn't be there, so we can crash, sure. Okay, let's run it. We have a magic number. Let's see if this magic number is correct. Wow, first time right. Actually, I was hoping for a wrong answer so we could start looking into how I debug and how I start uh, digging with tests at the code I wrote. But better luck tomorrow, I hope. Hope you had fun. Um, this was way too much regex for my taste, so I hope uh, we had enough of the regex parsing. And otherwise, I'm going to have to clean up my regex game and clean up this code a bit as well. So, see you tomorrow. Bye.